and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you about St. John the Evangelist Church. Here at Haunted Montreal, we bring you ghost stories in both French and English every Saturday. Before we get into today's video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we have a new tale to share. Now, without further ado, let's get spooky. Tourists wandering around Montreal's Place des Arts are often struck by an old neo-gothic stone church with a red roof, seemingly out of place among the more modern architecture of the vicinity. With its rugged look and ecclesiastical vocation, St. John the Evangelist Church is definitely an anomaly in the bustling newer entertainment district. Erected in 1878, the venerable Red Roof Church is certainly the oldest building in the area, which is presently undergoing a 21st century construction boom. As glossy new theaters, cinemas, and performance venues go up, St. John the Evangelist Church remains firmly planted on the corner of St. Urbain and President Kennedy Avenue. It is both an architectural reminder of an earlier era and a fully functioning Anglo-Catholic church, which continues to serve its congregation and operate a drop-in center for the needy. What the tens of thousands of tourists streaming past during festival season likely don't realize is that the Red Roof Church has long been rumored to be haunted. These hauntings, however, they're extremely unusual. They're benign. Instead of unsettling cold spots and other unpleasant paranormal activities manifesting themselves, the spirit haunting this church is said to be very gentle. Indeed, Warm spots are known to surface on occasion, comforting the parishioners lucky enough to experience one. The feeling, according to one churchgoer, is not unlike being embraced by a loved one. St. John the Evangelist Church is not just unique in its surroundings, but unique in Montreal. Built from 1877 to 1878, dedicated in 1878 and consecrated in 1905, the Red Roof Church was designed by architect William Tooton Thomas in consultation with Rector Edmund Wood, the founder of the parish. Wood had studied churches in England and his vision was central to the construction of St. John the Evangelist. The style of this Victorian church is perhaps best described as slum gothic, originally developed for the poor ritualist parishes of London, England. Described as muscular and big-boned, the church was designed to be sensible and restrained on the outside, but robust in decoration and capable of advanced ritual inside. With services offered in Latin, a pipe organ, and a choir, and billowing incense, the Anglo-Catholic Church, or High Church, caters to those who have sometimes controversial beliefs and practices within Anglicanism. Emphasizing the Catholic heritage of the Anglican religion and differing identities of churches, Anglo-Catholicism embraces ancient Catholic rituals such as solemn high mass, solemn evensong, and benediction. Some controversial worshippers also hope that the Anglican and Catholic churches will eventually reconcile and merge together. The church's founder, Edmund Wood, was undoubtedly a remarkable man. Born in 1830 to a scholarly family in the south of England, he followed in his family footsteps as a devoted student. Following stints at schools in Brighton and London, Wood was admitted into the Ivy League at St. John's College, Oxford in 1849. However, due to financial constraints within his family, he was quickly transferred to the less expensive University College in Durham, shattering his original dream to achieve a world-class education. According to Wood, this unexpected situation caused a wound which time will never wholly heal. However, Wood plowed through his studies and received his BA in 1854 and MA in 1857. He also became involved in Durham's Anglican High Church, where he was made a deacon in 1855. He paid particular attention to the plight of the poor and disadvantaged coal miners, which led to accusations of popery from some parishioners and raised the ire of his local bishop. Meanwhile, his family emigrated to Lower Canada and his father died in Montreal in 1857. 
Wood decided to follow his family and arrived in Montreal in November 1858. Montreal Anglican Bishop Francis Fulford immediately put Edmund Wood in charge of ministering to the poor in the southeastern part of the parish, a vocation he would continue for the remainder of his life. Wood excelled at this work and showed a lot of empathy for the less fortunate. However, the original center for his mission work was far from ideal. At first, Wood had to contend with working from an old stone mortuary chapel in the Protestant burying ground, which today is the location of the complex Guy Favreau. Bishop Fulford, with the assistance of John Samuel McCord, granted permission to use the homely and decrepit building. The first day Wood and Bishop Fulford opened the mortuary door, they were nearly overpowered by the stench of decay. The bishop, his nostrils twitching, remarked, do you not think, Wood, a little incense would be appropriate? Edmund Wood was not discouraged. The mortuary was open for church services and seats were provided free of charge. Wood's pastoral work concentrated on the poor, prompting the congregation to grow quickly in size. Before long, there were twice as many people sitting outside among the tombstones as there were inside the mortuary. Wood, a lover of elaborate theatrical rituals, impressed his parishioners with the first choral evensong in Montreal, if not in Canada, on Christmas Eve in 1859. In 1860, he opened a school and assumed the role of teacher and headmaster. In July 1861, Bishop Fulford ordained Edmund Wood as an Anglican priest, laying the foundations for his future work overseeing the construction and administration of St. John the Evangelist Church. That same year, Wood founded Canada's first Anglo-Catholic parish and the first Anglican free seat church in Montreal. The old system involved renting out pews, which provided income for the church, but also allowed wealthy citizens to purchase the best seats. In replacing the pews with chairs, Wood advocated that the rich and poor should sit together at church and worship as equals before God. By 1874, the mortuary was deemed too small. A lot was purchased at St. Urbain and Ontario Streets, and Edmund Wood got to work planning and overseeing his dream church. After many years of meticulous work, St. John the Evangelist Church was finally open for worship on March 6th, 1878. Wood instituted weekly and daily choral services and the ceremony of liturgy was enhanced through a surplus clad choir, altar candles, and a prominent cross erected on the altar. Wood's love of the ritualistic would eventually lead to a conflict with Reverend Ashton Oxenden, Fulford's replacement as bishop in 1869. Oxenden was unhappy with the mode of conducting the ritual of public worship in one of the churches, and tangled with Reverend Wood over his unorthodox approach to the Anglican religion. Wood, never a person to compromise his ideals, responded with a publication entitled Catholic and Tolerant Character of the Church of England. By the 1880s, Wood's reputation had solidified as an excellent spiritual counselor, a passionate proponent of the use of music and ceremony to enhance the liturgy, and an initiator of a daily Eucharist in the church. Wood had successfully subdued his religious adversaries while attracting thousands of followers. Frederick George Scott, assistant master at the school Wood founded, suggested that there is no church in Canada that has not learned something from the standard of worship set by Father Wood. When the great rector Edmund Wood died in 1909, the city felt his loss keenly. A compassionate and selfless man, Wood was sorely missed. Bishop John Craig Farthing began an address to his synod the following year by stating, in the death of Mr. Wood, the Canadian church lost one of her best known and most honored priests. Such a life as his is witness to the fact that sacrifice alone is fruitful. During the church's history, there have been many reports of benign hauntings inside the building. Parishioners speculate that the ghost might be that of the church's selfless founder, Rector Edmund Wood. The spirit of the good rector is rumored to still visit the Red Roof Church now and again to check up on the congregation. The ghost is never regarded as sinister, but rather is seen as a happy reminder that the church's first patron, a passionate and visionary man, still appears to be very much involved in the ministry. 
According to a Montreal Gazette article from October 26, 1985, the church has been haunted since 1909, the year that Rector Edmund Wood died. The article cites the rector of the era, Canon Humphrey Slattery, who believed that Wood still visited the church sometimes, but that there was nothing sinister about it. On one occasion, Slattery was alone and praying at the altar when he heard someone enter the church and take a seat. The rector began to pray aloud, expecting a response from the worshipper. However, nobody responded. When he turned around to see who was sitting there, he realized the chair was empty and that he was still alone. It's a presence, claimed Slattery. There's a feeling about the church, and, and sometimes it's intensified. He went on to conclude it's not a bad feeling at all, explaining that both clergymen and parishioners have experienced it. One standing joke, according to Slattery, occurs when objects such as keys or documents go missing for short periods of time. Those seeking the lost items often claim Father Wood must have taken them. Furthermore, those attending or visiting the church have sometimes experienced comforting warm sensations. According to a theology student named Stephanie Rendino, the only public building that she knows is haunted is St. John the Evangelist Church. She states specifically that the founder still visits now and again, manifesting with a warm spot rather than a cold spot. While in many churches, the idea of a clergyman becoming a ghost might be seen as sacrilegious, at St. John the Evangelist, there's no scandal to it. Indeed, in 1985, Rector Slattery stated that they believe in the communion of souls, so it's not out of order to realize that the world we live in is full of spirits who have gone before us. Today, the Red Roof Church is making an effort to fit into the Cartier de Spectacle. Presently overseen by a rector named Friar Keith Schmidt, the church continues to offer ritualistic religious services in Latin, English, and French. Recognized for its heritage by the Quebec Religious Heritage Council, the church has also appeared alongside Nick Nolte in the 1997 Academy Award-winning film Affliction, and was featured in Quebec science fiction television series Dans une galaxie près de chez vous. The church also rents out the building for various workshops, film screenings, and spectacles. It would appear to the satisfaction of artists that censorship is not an issue. For example, the Pop Montreal Festival once advertised a film screening of The Omen at the Red Roof Church as a Midnight Mass church screening. Furthermore, the screening was co-organized with the Miskatonic Institute of Horror Studies, a non-profit endeavor whereby established horror writers, directors, scholars, and programmers slash curators celebrate horror history and culture while helping enthusiastic fans of the genre to gain a critical perspective. Named after the fictional university in American horror master H.P. Lovecraft's literary oeuvre, the Miskatonic Institute of Horror Studies, despite its dark mandate, was most welcome to use St. John the Evangelist Church for their activities. It is unknown whether or not the spirit of Edmund Wood visits when non-church activities are taking place, such as horror workshops and movie screenings, but those familiar with the ghost probably wouldn't be surprised if the good rector did make an appearance. Not only was Edmund Wood a fan of the theatrical, but he also insisted that absolutely everyone would be welcome in his church, a tradition that continues to this very day. I hope you enjoyed that uh, feel-good break for our channel, such is the story of St. John the Evangelist Church. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who has experienced something at the church? If so, we would love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories about what could be going on. Thank you so much for stopping by. If it's your first video, we do hope you'll stick around for the next one. We post videos in both French and English every Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by Donovan King, it's all in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling tours. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll have a new video out next Saturday. But until then, stay spooky.